Hello and welcome to the Sport for Business Daily. I'm delighted to be joined today by Gronia McElwain, who is about to be unveiled as the new presenter on Sky Sports GAA coverage. Now, Gronia will be familiar to us all anyway from presenting TG Cahar's coverage of the Ladies All Ireland Football Championship over the last number of years, as well as many other broadcasting highs. This is a big step up, though. This is going to put you onto an international scale. First of all, congratulations. Thanks for joining us this morning. How does it feel to be out there now in front of the men's All-Ireland as well as the ladies' All-Ireland? Thank you very much, Rob, and delighted to be with you um, this morning. Really looking forward to it and very excited um, about the GEA Championship. Um, I suppose I've been broadcasting for 15 years at this stage, and I've been very lucky to work with all the broadcasters um, in terms of sports coverage, TG Cahar, RTE, BBC, um, Air Sport and Sky Sports. So it's so it's 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 brilliant opportunity. I'm looking forward to the games coming up, um, and um, I'm just hoping that we have a championship. It's just kind of worrying the the numbers that we're seeing at the moment, but really hopeful and positive that we'll have in a championship. And excited to be bringing the games to everyone at home on Sky Sports. And Sky Sports will have a, a variety of games. It's going to be obviously a very condensed season so it'll be helter skelter once it does get underway um but you you will have games throughout at each of the various different stages all the way up to coverage of the of the finals themselves as well in partnership with rte it's going to be very busy is it going to impact on the work that you would traditionally do with tg Car? It's going to be really busy and and unfortunately it will this season, Rob. I suppose before pre-COVID, um, as I mentioned there, I work as a freelance broadcaster, so I'm very lucky that I have a brilliant relationship with all the broadcasters and I'm very honoured and thrilled that they trust me to be involved with the, their sports coverage. Um, in terms of GEA at pre-COVID, I was able to work with them all because the dates had all aligned that way. But unfortunately now with what's happened, everything is just packed jam-packed into a really tight schedule, which means I can't work with everybody this season. I just can't be in two, more than two places at once. So I'll just be working with Sky Sports and their GEA coverage this season. Okay, well, we'll miss you from the, hopefully, the last Sunday before Christmas uh, for the ladies' final. But no doubt you'll be, uh, you'll be back in years where things become a little bit more normal. Speaking of normal, how has it been for you trying to actually build a relationship with the production team, with your co-presenter, Brian, and with all of the analysts as well? Because broadcasting is so often all about chemistry and it's difficult to do that over Zoom. It's difficult to do it over Zoom, but I suppose I, I've been working at this for 15 years and a lot of the people that I've met, which is the beauty of working in sport, is the same people that you you meet along the, w the way in the production set up, like Kieran O'Hara would be someone that I would know quite well, who's the producer of Sky Sports G and Rory O'Connor as well. So I'm delighted that I'm working with them. And then in terms of the analysts, um, I mean, I've, I've, I've met them and I've worked with them on various projects throughout the years. And not, none of them are particularly shy, Rob. So there are plenty to say they have plenty of opinions and I'm looking forward to hearing their opinions over the coming weeks. They will indeed have plenty to say. Do we, do we know yet or is this still very fluid what the, the studio setup is going to be like for you? Because we've seen with coverage from both within Ireland and internationally that things are different, that there will be the potential for the live set up pitch side as, as TG Cahar and RTE have been doing. Is that the way that Sky Sports are going to present GAA this year? Because it's going to be a bit chilly in November and December out there. It's going to be chilly. The honest answer to that is I'm not sure yet, Rob. I haven't been told yet what that situation is going to be. And I think it's probably fluid. They're still working on, on what will happen. I know it won't be like last year. We won't be inside a studio inside, unfortunately. So it'll be, I think, plenty of layers. That's going to be the secret, which, but I'm well used to being outside in very cold weather. And this is Ireland. So you can equally have cold weather in January, February, March of a year. Then you can have an October, November, December. So sometimes the weather can actually be nicer at those time of the months. That's what I'm telling myself anyhow. But um, I'll have plenty of layers and and you just wrap up and I'm just looking forward to it. I mean, it's 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 a privilege to be fit to bring these games to people at home. It's going to be a very different year this year. There's so many people are looking forward to watching games. And I think what the last few months have shown us all, Rob, is how, in sport, how important sport 
plays in our lives and what an impact it has on it. And it gives us that particular hour or two hours or whatever time we're watching the sport to forget about the normality or the reality of life. And we can kind of get engrossed in the game. So I think in a way, it's it's going to be a huge honour this year to be fit to bring games to people at home that can't make the, mat the matches because I don't think we're going to have any fans the way things are going at the moment at any of the games. So I think it's just it's an, an even bigger onus on broadcasters this year to, to, to package games well, to do analysis very well, to bring the atmosphere of the games to people at home and just kind of help them, I suppose, over that couple of hours in some very dark, wintry evenings. Um, people that maybe are living up by themselves at home that would normally be going out to matches, that we actually bring some enjoyment to them and that they bring their games to them. So that's what I'm really looking forward to is bringing the games to people at home and doing the best analysis and, and best packaging of the matches that we can do. You mentioned bringing the atmosphere to them and in a you know, in an empty stadium or, or even in a stadium with just has a couple of hundred people dotted around the grandstands, that can be a real challenge. Now, Sky Sports, and we covered this early on before the, the outset of it, uh, covering stadium noise and crowd noise going into the stadium. There's been a mix of that. We've seen it in the Aviva Stadium with Dundalk last week where it was just purely natural sounds that was coming through uh, and in some of the, the club championship finals which have been brilliantly exciting but without the, the roar of the crowd to guide you along. Sometimes you just forget about it because the sport itself tells the story but from a broadcaster you have to be conscious of how it is that you're actually getting across that excitement to people. Is that something that you've put an awful lot of thought and, and, and time into over the last couple of weeks and months? I think probably the production team are, are working on that. And I'm not 100% sure if what has been decided yet and um, whether there will be sign from a GA um, backdrop, but, which we don't have. Like it's easier to do that for the soccer, the football matches because um, they have a bank of sound to do that on Sky Sports. They don't have that uh, on GAA. So I'm not sure in, in terms of production, what's going to happen with that. In terms of me being present at the games, I mean, it's eerie. It's definitely eerie being in an open stadium able to hear all the management and players and in one way it's actually really interesting as well because you can hear everything that they're saying and um, which you normally never can't but it is it's it's very eerie because we're not used to being at matches without fans and fans it makes the atmosphere the color the excitement the encouragement words maybe that's a nice way of saying some things um but just actually people being present and it's, and we're all connected i think that's the big thing it's at, at being at a match is that you're connected with with their, your community um, and in GEA, particularly, it's, it's tribal, it's parochial as well. So you're actually there as part of your from your club and and from your county. So not to have that will, of course, be very difficult. You know, I don't think anyone's going to pretend and say it's going to be the same. It's not. It can't be the same because that's what makes our GEA game so unique is that our fans and our supporters are such an integral part of it. But I think just from a broadcasting term, we have to show the matches. And I think we've seen players in the club game, club championship, which has been fantastic this season. We've We've seen how much it means to the club players being involved playing their sport like you can see that passion you can see that drive and when they win it, it just because their fans aren't there it, it doesn't show that they think any less of that win that they've done because they're thinking of their fans at home who are watching it on on social media or watching it on tv and how much it means to them winning that um this season so i think players will be definitely tr tr doing their utmost best to get an All-Ireland title, to get a provincial um, final title, to do the best that they can do. Um, and it's going to be just very exciting. But I don't think anyone's going to pretend that it's it's not going to be the same with our fans. It's not. But I think all we can do in these very strange times is bring these games to as many people as possible and do the best as we can as broadcasters to, to, to show that... Um, that, that atmosphere and, and how much it means to the players being out on the pitch and how much it means to us being there able to watch them play. One of the nice things about the club championships has been seeing so many times when a brother is replacing a brother from the uh, from the subs bench and there are so many different family stories. They are, of course, team sports, but they're played by individuals and it's the role of the media and the broadcasters to bring those stories to life. Are there anybody, are there any of the players in particular that you'd be looking forward to maybe having alongside you two metres apart uh, for an interview over the course of, uh, of these championships that you might not have had a chance to interview so far in your career? Yeah, I, I think I think for me, I, I anyone who comes up and speaks to you, I'm always thrilled to talk to them because everybody has a story. Everybody, it, it means something to everybody else. And, some, and for some people coming up to talk to you, maybe 
they're quite shy or they're not, they're, they're, they mightn't want to talk to media, but they do that because they realize, well, it's important for me to speak on behalf of the team or it's important for me to speak because people at home want to hear me speak or maybe my mom and dad are listening and they want, and they want to listen to what I'm saying as well. But I suppose in a purely selfish, um, I'm from Monaghan, so I mean, it would be amazing if I could actually speak to Ryan Wiley and Conor McManus um, after Monaghan won Sam Maguire. Wouldn't that be really nice? That would be very nice indeed, and I see the uh, the Monaghan jersey in the in the background there, alongside of Dublin, um, two in a row, three in a row from the, from the Dublin ladies. The, uh, the the home though is in Galway at the moment, and Galway would have certainly hopes of being in contention when it comes to both the uh, the hurling and the football this year. Um, how far, being a resident of the of the county, do you think that they might go in the championships this year? I think in terms of championship, it's going to be really interesting, Rob, because we're um, gauging championship or players' performance from March. You know, we haven't actually seen any intercounty action from March. So it's going to be very interesting to see how players gel together. Like the club champions has been amazing. Everybody is recommending that this is the way forward for the future. And I don't think there's too many people who would disagree with about not having a split um, county club season. Um, I suppose in terms of Galway, you know, you, you can look back to in the hurling, first of all, to, to last season. They didn't particularly perform well and um, didn't make the All Ireland quarter final, which in Galway it, it isn't particularly good for them. There was a lot of talk about that because I think that was their earliest exit since 1965. Um, so that that's a huge deal. This year in the league, they had done they done well. Like they were going to actually set up a meeting with Wexford in the league quarterfinal, and then COVID came along, and that was cancelled. And now they're going to be meeting Wexford in the championship this year as well, which is a rerun of the 2017 Leinster final. So I think in terms of how they'll do. It, you know, nobody knows that's going to be a, a brilliant, brilliant game because both sides, every time they met, and when they met, I think in the league this year, it was a draw as well. So it's any time that they actually meet, it's, it's very, um, it, it's, it's, there's never much between them. So again, it's, it's hard to call. I'm not sure how that's going to go. They, whoever loses that does have a second chance in the championship this year. So, I mean, I think a lot will, will tell an awful lot by how they perform in that game against Wexford. And because of rustiness, et cetera, it's going to be very difficult for county teams to see how they actually all will perform. In terms of the football then, um, I mean, it's a knockout championship. This is going to be extremely exciting for fans. I'm not sure if players will like it as much as as, um, as the fans will, but I mean, this is it. One chance and you're gone and, and Galway meets Sligo. They'll be expected to beat Sligo and they've been doing particularly well in the league this year as well. And as it stands, they're at the top of the league. And again, they were due to meet Mayo and COVID came along and it was cancelled. So they have two matches as kind of a warm up, I suppose, the Connacht Championship which will be interesting to see how they perform in those games. And I think we can tell a lot about their performances as well. In Galway, it's a massive county. Like you don't realise until I moved here how big of a county it actually is, you know, compared to Mon where I'm from. So you were, and I live in the Gaeltacht. So I live in a place called Bela Dangan and our local club here would be Neavan, the Litcher Moor. So when you drive from here, it could, you're two hours driving, you're still actually in Galway. So, I mean, it's a massive county and, and, and both football and hurling and they love their football and hurling. So I think both uh, supporters will be expecting both would do well. I think for the football, they definitely would expect them to be in a conic final um, and then see how that happens after that. But I think it's been a strange year it's, um, I mean, we still don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, we've seen in Donegal and Armagh how COVID has impacted there and training has ceased. So I think there'll be a lot of twists and turns and surprises in this championship, Rob. Um, and let's see, we're looking forward to it taking place, fingers crossed, and looking forward to having some brilliant, brilliant games on Sky Sports as well. The excitement is palpable. Let us, as you say, hope with all of every fibre of our being that it does carry on and it does take place as we hope. Uh, we've got plenty more coverage on the site today about Sky Sports coverage throughout the coming months. Um, but for the moment, uh, you're our headline and uh, we wish you the very best of luck in, uh, in stepping up into, the, into this new role and then eventually to welcoming you back into the ladies game as well. But for the moment, anyway, Gronje Matlowain, Mila Mahogat for taking time out to spend time with us today. Gromaigat, Rob.